future with Shovavim AI. AI, 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 Shovavim AI. This is an interesting concept that we're going to go into together in the merit of this holy time that we are joining together, the six weeks of Shovavim, Shmos Vieira, Boy, Bishalach, Yisro Mishbotim, also the B'mitzvah week of my youngest son, Shmuel Zama Mordechai. We dedicate this year to his merit. We have, thank God, an opportunity to discuss something which is a brand new concept for many. Some have already been discussing this for many years. When I look online, in terms of the Torah world, it's still a new subject, a new topic. I checked out Rabbi Breitowitz on Osameh. He has, thank God, some good tshuvas and good answers, even though it's still a lot, a lot of unknown realities. You check out Jordan Peterson, how he, Dr. Jordan Peterson, how he discusses it. You can look at um, Joe Rogan's episodes where it's been discussed with some of his famous, famous guests. And uh, of course, we have the opportunity to go in the merit of the Pasha, of Vieira, Pasha's Vieira, we get a big chizuk. Let's first discuss the Pasha before we go into Shavavim III. And then we'll learn, please God, some of Rav Shalom Arish's beautiful Svarim. We are in the studio here in Yushalayim, in Kodesh. Thank God we get to do this on a weekly level. Very important concept. We're back in the studio last week. We were in the house. Check out the previous class at home. We were talking about children. And it's very connected. Shuvah Bonim, Shavavim. So the concepts that we're going to go ahead now, because what is the future? Muna is our future. We are looking into how we can bring a Muna concept, united souls, focus, a unity energy into everything we're doing. The fact that I'm still sitting in this studio is already unity. Thank God. Liron Daga had a for Shlema. He's back in the studio and we're still going ahead with these important classes live on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and most importantly, Brezlov.com. Yes, the Banat, the staff below managed to get up the two weeks ago class and it's the official version is now live as well as our Amuna is our future podcast, Brezlov of Israel podcast. And we are going ahead, reminding all of you about these important booklets. Very, very needed. Yes, everyone here should check it out. we got the True Happiness booklet. I've been surfacing it around. And we have the important Loving Everyone as My Own Child. Very important, for all from Rav Shalom Arish, obviously, and translated into English. And the Source of Salvation. This is Shabbos. We put up some beautiful clips of Rav Arish talking about that. And you guys have given some beautiful feedback. I have a bunch of sheets here. These are all the questions that are piling up. And I have been forwarding them on to Rav Shalom Arish and his team, Rav Dain Elgrad. And there is a new source of questions coming through the website to the Rav. Um, but the truth is I'm only really getting to very few questions. I'm reminding them, please, to try go ahead with these questions as many as possible. I'm assuming on Instagram Live we're good with the headphones. Yep. You guys are hearing me and uh, everyone out there is welcome to give feedback to as we're going live and to even send your questions here, DM us and we'll please collect them, uh, except for Instagram, we'll be able to collect them and put them on our list, our growing list that will continue to be forwarded to the Rav. I'll even leave a copy, a few copies actually in the studio for the Rav. But let's go into the, the feedback. So this 40, 94th Amuna class that we've been doing, because it's really, they put it up as the third one, but that's the studio's agenda. We put up the 94th class since we started these live classes with Rav Shalom Arash, translated by Rav Dayan Elgrad, who we appreciate so much, sh- sharing these wonderful concepts during Shobavim. We're now in Shobavim, already the second week, to a full Shlema of Avra Bas Chana, and Rebison Henebas Bracha Devor Alea. And we wish them to all the good people. Everyone should be safe from this corona craziness. Unfortunately, they're starting to bring tests back to Ben Gurin. They're only recommended. They're not they're not obligational, thank God, this time. But we still are praying for Hashem to save us from all these kind of things. But Hashem to success of all our special guests and families and the Holy Land. You guys who follow us are wonderful, appreciated followers as well as our Real Amuna Tuesday, which is where we are today. We welcome all the guests that come to our class. Please, God, we'll renew that at some point and dedicate to the success of Rav Shalom Ben Yemna, to his weekly live classes, Tila Rav Kabasmasha, to her success, and also a success to all our followers and Ilya Nishmas, Yahavda Ben Chaim, Lacham Gedalia, Son Yerachim Adonai Ben Gedalia. We appreciate Gedalia's growing uh, content, always, always a big part of what we're doing. And I will say something, you know, one of the things that, Gedalia gave me inspiration on and it reminded me mentioning his name. 
that it's important to realize how much time you've invested. Now, I don't t personally talk about the years and years of time I invested and the Masuris Nefesh I've had. You can check out the Campaign Against Antisemitism, podcast against antisemitism episode where I appear and feature and talk about my journey somewhat so you can catch up on how I ended up being in this position of doing these weekly classes. So you can put, give some context for all those guys who are new. But there's also uh, a, re a recognition that I spent hours and hours by Holy Siddiquim, especially when you have times like Shobhavim and there's a tremendous amount of awe, light and Tahira and Kedusha that Siddiquim are able to access and reveal to our generation 2022, 20, 23, already now 5783. We are already in such a time in history that we need the light of the Siddiquim, the Ura Shal Mashiach, the light of Mashiach to be channeled and, and given over through those pure souls who understand these concepts so that we can take a, an idea like, for example, the Yiddish and I brought it down when I spoke at uh, Shirat Dovid on pre Musaf. the idea that as the generations get weaker and weaker, there's a cutness in the foshes, weakening of the generation, nefesh of the jet of the door, the Eurydice Adoras, as they call it, and people like to make a big deal out of it. There's also a tremendous Tahara Salev purity of lave, a purification that goes on. And this is the perfect introduction to how we can discuss Shobhavim, I, AI, how we can deal with these new technologies that are coming very, very soon to all of us. Chat, GPT, I believe, if I'm getting that wrong, please correct me, chat, chat GPC, something like that, one of those names, or GPT. I think that's the, the point is open AI is here, it's, it's happening already online, and people can write in questions to the chat and get answers from the AI algorithms and the way it works it out. You can understand it more from someone who's more technically advanced in those areas. But the concept is that you're able to create rabbi sermons, if that's what you're into. You can create amuna drushes, yeah? You can put in all kinds of information. I haven't actually tested it out myself, but based on listening to enough rabbis and online um, thought leaders, I've seen that there's a tremendous amount that you can do with it, as well as programming, customer service, and there is going to be an elimination of many, many positions and jobs in the coming years because of this kind of technology. And this is something which all of us should have some awareness in a real way that this isn't going away. This, unless Mashiach comes like now, we're going to be affected by it. So we have to get our head around it. I believe in the Torah world, the right approach is Lechachila Riba, that we have to go into technology with a Lechachila, first things first, uh, mindset and tackle the challenges, not wait for them to overtake us and therefore we'll be overwhelmed by what's coming up because we didn't deal with it when it was there. Just like all the current issues of mental crisis, mental health crisis and all the other things, the drug pan pandemic and et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things we have to tackle these issues as they come upon us. And show with him is an example where we use tools of spirituality like constant praying, amuna through Ritzifus and learning, constant learning through purifying our eyes, our mouth, how we speak, yeah, how we conduct ourselves in relations, in, in our Kedusha Sabris, Kedusha Sanayim, Kedusha Sabris, Kedusha, Kedusha Sabir, how we use all these different tools that Moshe Weinberg has been giving Shirim in his Chaburah of Yosef Asadi, you can check it out, from Simaya Zilberberg, one of the Siddiquim, I didn't just uh, learn his Sefer, but I sat with him years and years and prayed with him and had the merit to be by him. Oh, with Yosef Daniel, we're just discussing Siddiquim and here you are. To remind everyone, we have Unity Bookings, Yosef Daniel, you feature there, we put you up there on our Unity Inspires Projects.com new site, new developing site for all these wonderful, talented musicians, speakers, creators, mentalists. We need to create a big strengthening of those kind of souls in the world. And that's what we're doing here in Amuna class weekly with Rav Shalom Morish and myself and any other of our staff who managed to get a class online. Hopefully, Rav Ralph Cohen will return soon. But let's hear some feedback before we go ahead. Rotti's wrote true. Wow, fantastic, inspiring, lifted. Nissim Black in the studio. Yeah, there's still being comments on that wonderful session we did with Nissim a year ago now. Mazatov Zalman Goldsmith, that's my son on the Bemitzvah. I wrote, thank you, brother. Back to them. This is beautiful. Rev. Jonathan Galed. Someone else wrote, Nissim Black Sukos is a fabulous video. So, one of the studio people were like, how come there's so much Nissim Black on our site? Well, one of the reasons is because it's very popular. And uh, people, thank God, connect with him. And as he's a student of the Rav 
and also part of my unity bookings it's very important for me to make sure that he's present in what we're doing and we'd love to have him back again in the studio soon yes father and son rocking it dr goodman the moving minute daily dose divinity roaring rocking dendaciousness yes thank you dr goodman always got the right way of flow and he's on the moving minute i believe as well on instagram the soulmate connection received the opposite and that's how we know ellie goldsmith care children someone wrote i love the class thank you rab shalom Marish. blessings live class shalom ellie too may hashem bless the great rabbi and they're so happy that the re, the reestablishment of the live classes is back and we want to go ahead now with our class. Like I said, we have a long list of questions. I'm not going to answer them all myself. I'm going to leave it, hopefully, with Rav Shalom Rosh and Rav Dain Elgar to get to them soon. And uh, there's a few sheets here. So hopefully in the next few weeks, with all being well, we'll get those questions answered. And thank you for sending them and keep sending them in as they are being forwarded to the Rav, Rav Dain Elgar and to the classes here in the studio. It's just a matter of time. Please, God, they will get answered. Okay. So what do we do now? We show of him, but we're in this special time, this Pasha, the Shem's bringing down the light of seven plagues, Makkus, seven ways of the, destroying the negative energy and replacing that with healing and goodness for the Bnei Israel, for the children of Israel, so they can become a light unto the nations as we go through these six Pashas of show of him. That journey that we're in the middle of right now, and right now we see Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron Cohen our leaders, our shepherds, being the guiding forces in Egypt in the place of Metzorim, of restrictions, of difficulties, of challenges, and helping us through revealing Hashem's will again and again in different levels of creation. As we said, the seven plagues are connected to the seven spheres, the seven divine emanations, also connected into all the different aspects of creation, because each time it's with the water, with the, with the earth, with the air, with the, with the Ruach, with the Eish, and the fire. So that's the idea that goes through all the aspects of creation, constantly purifying, purifying, purifying all the things that were damaged in the 10 sayings of creation that Hashem put into the world. These seven sayings, the seven days, the seven, the concept of seven is purified as the Svasamis brings down. And the ultimate purification comes again, continues on with Bo, and is climaxed by the Esedibrus. So we have the 10 plagues turn transform into the ten commandments because that's now after purification we come now ready to receive the ten sivuim the ten ways of the vacas of connecting to god creating connecting to our creator these commandments and it always comes over as more like a obligational feeling but they're actually opportunities for our souls to as as the zora kodesh says they're eight sorts they're ways to connect to to this to the creator to what we're here for to our purpose fulfill our tachlis to do the the tachlis master race what the world was created for to fulfill that and to live it and say now you have this new technology Let's just bring this in now. And there's all this Hashkacha Pratis and divine providence and AI comes into the reality. And when back in the day, we were just getting our heads around the internet phenomenon or even before that, the television or radio phenomenon. We're getting our heads around all these new creations, the phone phenomenon, and suddenly comes this technology, AI, robots, VR, all these different aspects of, of how technology can become more and more powerful and more profound and its impact on employment and its impact on how industries run and then how we create media and, and get information and clarify things, ask questions and understand that what's true reality, what isn't reality, getting more and more challenged as day goes on especially with all the different people involved in these things not everyone is pure not everyone has good intentions so a lot of the technology unfortunately can be used to confuse people or cause even worse things god forbid so we have a, a mission and the concept is i was i was looking at richard mccully he's a friend of ours from uh, isaac uh he miracles he has some beautiful music as well and a, a muna friend in montreal he mentioned the, this constant back and forth between divine providence and ai like how's it going to work so these are very obviously philosophical questions, but very profound, deep questions that we can think about how a computer or a machine that's constantly creating um, new forms of information, new forms of clarifying things, and to the point where it starts to use visual and 
vocal and all the different ways of communication to clarify, clarify, clarify in a very advanced way, but in ways much quicker than we can process and in, in much more advanced ways, seemingly. So then we have now a challenge, like how does that work then when it's no longer humans and the Bria, it's now this whole new form. It seems to be outside, but it's obviously Enomavada, and that's one of the clarifications of Shobhavim, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Echein, Hashem, Echad, the six words of Shema Yisrael. Hashem is one, and therefore even technology, even, Ifilu, AI, is part of the oneness of Hashem, and it has full Hashkach process, full divine providence that it's here. And hopefully, just like the internet has been, has been hopefully, and we're all working on this, and this is our Amuna Global tagline, and we're all weekly coming together to get this stronger and stronger. We're trying to use the internet for Kedusha, for holiness, for good things, for, to bring about an awareness of true values, needed values, for people to have happy homes, to have success in how they do business, to be able to connect to each other in a, in a, real, in a real way that gives us a global unity, emuna experience of life. Thank you, Hashem. So that's the kind of way we want to bring to AI. Somehow, there will hopefully be enough geniuses, I don't know, Lex Friedman, one of these guys out there who are, he happens to be Jewish, but they'll have the ability, the will, to use this technology for love, for connection, for true values, for Torah, yeah, for spirituality. And that's the idea that by us strengthening our inner reality, the inner purity grows, even though the external aspects gets more and more challenging. The inner clarifications that we're working on daily, daily. So that's why we're going to learn now Rav Shalom Asher's book to get some of that inspiration, how to cope with this AI transformation that's going to be taking place in the next few years. And we're going to see it impact our daily life unless Mashiach comes and saves us the core of Mamish. Amen. Now, the glory of the king. Everyone must take this vividly, real for himself by using a variety of metaphors and images to help understand how much Hashem wants to assist him and save him. So already that's a big comfort. Hashem really wants to assist you and save you daily, every one of us. For instance, imagine a father and mother, yeah, Abba Ve'ima, whose son has grown completely alienated from them and caused them endless pain. If he come and tells them that he wants to return to them, they immediately rejoice and forget the entire past and give him everything of all their heart. As for parents of a son who remains, by the way, we're going past the 15 minute mark, hope you don't mind, just we have a lot to say. As for parents' son who remains alienated from them, they would be willing to give them so much if only he would want to return. So that's all it is about. We have to want the rots and the will. Remember, this is the garden of yearning and will. We have to want that connection. That's an inner reality. That's the soul level. That's the chelik elakai memal mamish. That's the part of the soul, the united soul. That's why I wrote this book and the extracts below. They're already on the 25th, I believe. And we have United booking, Unity Bookings. These are soul focuses that I'm trying to strengthen the soul level because that, in my opinion, is a solution to this whole technological revolution. We need to have the soul level strengthened to balance out this technological reality that we're going to be dealing with, that the robots will never have soul. We have a gift. This is what separates us from all the technology and gives us the ability to withstand this takeover. For example, Shabbos, yeah, by disconnecting to reconnect. We connect to a day, Yom Adonishmasa. Never before will the soul level be more experienced than Shabbos as we have nowadays and as time goes on. And as more and more, we're going to realize how much we need this Shabbos. Even the rest of the world is realizing it, that they need to disconnect to reconnect to the soul level. These Shabbos as a show of him are huge lights in this six weeks of clarifications. Yeah, till we get to Purim and then we can celebrate. But let's first, if he comes and tells them that he wants to return, they'll immediately rejoice. And forget the entire past, because all we have to do is want to connect, yeah, and do everything of all our heart. As for parents of a son, made from them, they'd be willing to give him so much if you only want to return. So you'd forget about all, oh, yeah, and the Shami Yaseira here, Yosef Dino added, that's true, that's talked about in this book. We had a beautiful clip. The power of Shabbos is the key to blessings and everything. If this is true, even of normal parents in this world, how much more is it true of our Father in heaven, yeah, Avinu Shabbat whose love and compassion are infinite and whose will is infinite? As the holy Baal Shem Tov, yeah, the Chus Yagin Aleinu of Yisrael Ben Eliezer Baal Shem, and today is the yacht site of Rav Shneer Zalman of Liadi, <coughs> Rav Shneer Zalman Ben Boruch, I believe. It's Chus Yagin Aleinu, the Balatanya, his yacht site. It's an unbelievable light and continuation of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, who we're going to quote now, and also the yacht site of the Shem Shmuel and the uh, uh, the Lelava Rebbe, and also, I believe, a bunch of other holy Siddiquim, uh, including Rev Deslo, who I'm named after, Rev Elio Eliezer Ben Ruven Dov. All these Siddiquim, their light should protect us, give us the connection, including 
in the canopy of the Baal Shem, the love of the Holy One, best believe, for the worst sinner of Israel is thousands upon thousands of times greater than that of a, of a father for his only son who was born to him after decades of waiting, hope, and prayer. As the Holy Zohar states, if a people only knew the love of which the Holy One, blessed be, loves the people of Israel and the souls who support that journey, yeah, they would roar like lions to come close to him. Yeah, that's the idea that this, the love between us and Hashem is so infinitely huge that nothing can dis extinguish that. No, as it says in Shir Hashem, all the mighty waters of the world can never distinguish. All the AIs and VRs and robots can never distinguish this unbelievable love that Hashem has for us. And that love that we have to generate towards Him, towards our Creator, so that we can keep that relationship clear and pure. And one, and that's the idea of purifying our eyes, purifying our purifying our, our bris, purifying our connection, and the idea of learning, say, learning Tanya every day. Personally, I do that. Learning the books of the Balatanya, learning the books of the Talmidim of the Baal Shem Tov, learning the uh, t the books of God of Amuna, yeah, Rabbi Nachman's Derech. Normal parents in this world cannot. Rabbi Nachman ben Feger ben Simcha. It's name. Normal parents in this world cannot give their son everything they want to give him. But our Father in Heaven has no problem giving us everything we need in order to rectify ourselves and fulfill our mission. All you have to do is open the door. When you do so, you accomplish what the Creator wants most and desires. Because the entire wish, you will come to Him and desire to be accepted by Him. Hashem wants us, yeah, he's, as we say in Yom Kippur, he's constantly receiving those who repent throughout that whole time period. But Shavuot is now six weeks experience of return, yeah, the Balat Shuvah's light should not just stay by the Balat Shuvah's, Rav Shumai once said, it needs to go global. The, the light of Tshuva, the light of the converts, the light of people who are connected to Hashem needs to go global. It's the, the key to the whole game. That's that we need to do that community, community, as a community, as people together. Right now in the studio, there's been all kinds of obstacles, me doing these things and having more of like guests and all this stuff. I'm just going ahead. I'm doing unity. I'm focused on getting the, the message out there through all our Brezov platforms and through the United Souls platform, Unity Bookings, every platform I'm on, it's about bringing unity and just going ahead with the Tov. I say Tov, I say Tov, I say Tov. As Rev. Manas Friedman once said to me in reaction to some trolling that was going on, I was connected with, with him and, and, and the trolls were attacking us. That he just said, said to me, I say Tov, I say Tov, I say Tov. Just keep doing good, don't worry about it. I thought of another image as well. If the son of the king were wandering about the streets in torn, filthy clothing, eating scraps from the garbage, sleeping on benches, shivering from the cold and reeking with putrid odors, how much pain the king would feel and how much would he want to aid him and do everything to help him to get out of that situation and return to a normal life? How much pain the king would feel if his son did not want to leave but insisted on living like a stray cat? Conversely, how much happiness does the king would feel when his son realizes he's headed in the wrong direction, asks for the king's help and guidance. Finally, the son wakes up like the turkey prince under the table, that famous story from the Rabbi Nachman, and there was a film made even about it. You can check it out, Turkey Prince on the Table. Important concept that we have to realize we have a godly soul, and that soul is with us no matter what we go through. In, in the rehabs and depths of depression, of, of despair, there's a godly soul and it wants nothing to do with that darkness. It wants to elevate the person out of that difficulty and it will not stop until you're elevated out of that difficulty. Now, we don't want to do it by leaving the world. We want to do it in this world. We want to be successful in this world. We want to have the blessings in this world. Yeah? So anyone out there wants to send a present to my son, Shmuel Zaman Mordechai Ben Masha should be Matzliach, his Bar Mitzvah, please God, coming up a coin in Yerushalayim. We're going to have the Bar Mitzvah this Shabbos. You're welcome to contact me. I will send the Bar Mitzvah present to Shmuel Zalm and Mordechai, a beautiful soul of Christ, so who's becoming now obligated in mitzvahs, uh, but in a spiritual way, he's getting more connected to his creator. He's putting tefillin on. He's connecting his mind, his heart, his soul. The tefillin purifies all those aspects of our being that we talked about in Shobhavim. The same applies to every Jew is sustained by sins, cravings, bad traits, and addictions. Darlene. And it was far from the lawful life that Shem wants him to live. A life of sweetness with Torah, prayer, and the fear of heaven. Who lives in the garbage in Gehenna? Because living in this world without faith is worse than Gehenna. And to be far from Torah and the fear of heaven is not a life. How much Hashem wants to help every Jew and how pleased he is by every Jew who realizes he's living a mistake and wants to improve. Even if his path to a normal life is very long, Hashem wants to help him do everything to shorten his path and make it possible to do complete tshuva. 
Thus, we possess complete awareness that Hashem wants to help everyone. Yeah, Hashem wants to help us all and save everyone spiritually. And He looks forward and hopes only for this. And when we fill an outcry in our heart, that indeed we must have this help. And when we understand that prayer is a tool that brings Hashem to actualize His will, our entire prayer will be a prayer on behalf of Hashem. And that connects us to last week's concept of Amunah Shleim, of complete Amunah. Someone wrote, Shalom from Ivory Coast. Breslov, yes, Nana Nachman Mu'uman, amazing. Someone else wrote, uh, Yosef Daniel, Mishnah, Toira, Umayn. Yes, we had the Rambam story. That's the idea of Neshama, Mishnah. It's all connected. This is true of the Hidspodidus and Shemona Esri. When we stand in prayer before Hashem, we must constantly remind ourselves, Hashem, who graciously gives man knowledge, wants to give me knowledge. Yeah, I pray that his will may be revealed and a result, realize the result of my weight of wanting knowledge. As a result of my ask Hashem a strong and powerful intent to attain true and complete knowledge. By the way, we are not featuring these days any of the posts on the Amuna Facebook. is no longer me. Some uh, young lady, I, will, I don't know, someone, a lady called Hannah, someone is now running that page. So anything posted there is not me anymore. If they somehow let my class feature there that would be up to them but i'm um, thank god i'm on the brez of english on facebook so anyone wants to reach out to me directly through Breslov, go to brez of english or Munas our future facebook or the other platforms that i run myself this is true of both his bodice from yesterday when he stand in prayer before hashem we must constantly remind ourselves hashem who graciously gives man knowledge wants to give me knowledge I pray that his will may be revealed and realize as a result of my wanting knowledge as a result of my asking Hashem for strong and powerful intent to attain true and complete knowledge. Hashem wants tshuva. He yearns and wishes that everyone would do tshuva. I pray on behalf of Hashem that this attempt be realized and actualized in me and all the people in the world as a result of having a pure and absolute intent their entire goal be to return to Hashem in tshuva and apply the same approach to all the blessings and to all the parts of prayer. And that's what we say every day. Uh, Hashem should give us das. Das is the key to know what Hashem wants from us. Hashivenu avinu and also prayers of tshuva, yeah, the sora secha, we should all return in complete repentance. This is the light of Shovavim. This is the light of Vieira purifying us with the light of, of the Siddiquim, Moshe and Aaron, the Balatani, the Baal Shem Tov, the Siddiquim are with us in this exile. I've been to High Ditch. I went there with Y. Jacobson. Unbelievable light there. And I'm, thank God, named after Rebdessa. I have the schus to bring out a, a yuchid, a unification like Rebdessa was doing in Ponovich, giving over Hasidus in the Levitch Shivas, bringing unity amongst all the different paths of Torah. This is what we're here for. Someone wrote, Shalom, everyone. Yes, we have to be energized. Shalom Aleichem, someone wrote on Instagram. Yeah, we are here together. This is up to us. And we have a few copies of the book, A New Light. I already got one copy, already arrived in Australia. Anyone wants to email me, ellie.goldsmith.co.il and we'll try and send you another free copy every week or so. We'll put one out to some special follower who's living in Global, who's sharing. What did you do to share in Global? Are you interacting? Are you involved in the platforms? Are you bringing alive Rav Oresh's message? Are you bringing alive Brezlov.com, Amunalive.com? Are you partnering there? However you can help, we will then send you as appreciation a copy of A New Light. As I said, I have a few copies here and we've already got one to Australia. So it's never too far or yes from Ivory Coast no problem we can get it to you just give us an email to my emails in description check out all the links in description keep joining us weekly we want to thank you all we want to wish Shmuel Zama Mordechai my son a Mazel Tov this permits will he's got to be back next Tuesday I hope uh, family will be on their way back to their homes uh, Tuesday actually my parents will still be around maybe I'll bring in my father as a special guest if he can do it in the morning we'll see and we'll just do a live feed or we'll have the video camera wide enough we can incorporate like, maybe he'll be our first special guest for this season this series we'll see we'll ask him let's see if we can make that happen I know you guys enjoyed it when he came and did the promotional focus so maybe as posh as Bo as we're going out Mitzrayim on a whole nother level, we should go out together with our family, all the Nishamas of Klaiso, not just the one-fifth, but all the souls and all the souls of the world should be um, redeemed. Bakor of Mamish, and thank you, Sharon, on a global. Amen. Thank you for joining.